Hey, yeah, I'm Harry Second from uh, Chaplin's Bar in Boscombe. Uh, South Bowl, Boscombe, uh, tucked and pokes down. It's a, a fantastic part of uh, West Bournemouth, really. Um, beautiful views. You got the, uh, the the coastal thing running up into Hengersbury Head, which is which is a really historical place. So it's, uh, it's 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 beautiful to look at, and it and it has you know sort of the first first people in England after the Ice Age were living in Hengersbury Head. So it's really old history, and the history of Boscombe and Southbourne is very interesting as well, with three landed estates. So. Um, so everything south of the Christchurch Road, going to the beaches, is uh, was landed estates that slowly got developed. Well, actually, quite quickly got developed into a, a Victorian seaside town, um, which I, I love the history. You know, so um, Dr. Compton developed Southbourne. Um, he, t he took everything from uh, the edge of the sh of the uh, Portman Estate to uh, Angersbury Head, doing very much to give people, you know, healthy living, you know, respite from London and the 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 smog and everything to healthy living by the sea you know which is still uh, you know the, the, they were talking a little while ago about remarketing Boscombe as Boscombe Spa and in fact Boscombe Spa you know was the name of the this part there was two parts of Boscombe Boscombe Spa being being around the Chine and the, and the um, pier where there was a was a there was a spa there which uh, was healthy water um, and so within about 20 30 years the population went here in Boscombe from few hundred maybe 600 people to 10,000 really fast development um, and we're only on about 22,000 now so uh, you know as a you know the real structure of Boscombe got built then so I find it fascinating and it's and it's a beautiful area there's, there's fresh air it's uh, beautiful views lovely to see the weather coming and we're close to uh, lots of other places like the New Forest and the uh, beautiful Jurassic Coast. Dorset's absolutely lovely, you know. So uh, it's, it's it's one of my f you know best places I've ever lived. <laughs> well, Boscombe you know, has always had its own identity, you know. Sort of it was built to rival Bournemouth, so it's you know we've got some magnificent buildings in Boscombe and. Um, the architecture was very well developed. We've got an opera house. We've got the Royal Arcade. You know, they've got an arcade in Westbourne. They've got an arcade in Bournemouth. They haven't got a Royal Arcade. We've got a Royal Arcade because uh, they got a Royal to open it. So, um, you know, we, we we were built to be, you know, very, very high class, really, you know. So um, that structure was, was here. And because um, and, and it had that kind of money and stuff coming in we've always had an art scene in Boscombe you know there was the first school of art Bournemouth School of Art was in Drummond Road um, we had most of the incarnations of the the uni what is now the Arts University at Wallace Down it was mostly based in Boscombe and Pokestown it was uh, uh, started off at Drummond Road uh, it was a briefly at the Lansdowne but then it was at the Arts and Technical College it was uh, the building just going down Christchurch Road to, to Pokestown uh, station on the left and then it went to Shelley Manor which was the home for home of the Shelleys which were obviously they were you know Mary Shelley was built for Mary Shelley and her son was a playwright and their fa his father obviously was uh, Percy Shelley the poet who was the most famous poet <laughs> of, of uh, you know romantic poet of English his history really which was uh, you know his influence because it was he was one of the estate uh, landed estate holders Shelley's influence on the area was was very noticeable you know and um, and also just the way the councils you know we you know there's more retirement communities on the coast so the, you know they always cared about their 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 parks and their environment and also their their arts you know and what they had to do to keep themselves entertained so I think Boscombe's always had an arts legacy you know and uh, so I, you know, I like it for that. You know, there's a. It was, in some ways, surprisingly easy to set up a seven day a week music, original music, place here, even though it was. Uh, in recent years, obviously, in recent times, it's become it's, it's deprived and um, struggled like a lot of seaside towns has. You know, but um, it's got this embedded art scene, so it was very easy to sort of host a lot of arts in this area. Mm. Well, communities, you know, everyone working together, t talking, socialising, people knowing about each other, meeting each other. I mean, here, in this this place is very much, that's what it does, you know, so it's a meeting place for everybody. People come here and they meet each other, they meet new people. Um, you know, strong communities, they, uh, 
you know they're robust you know they support you know they they they, they support themselves they they care about their environments you tend to see more independent shops and stuff, you know. So uh, I think community is very important. I think Boscombe's got a strong community. Southbourne is definitely very strong, you know. Um, uh, but Boscombe has a very strong community. We've got a lot of transient people in Boscombe, which was, you know, part of the nature of how the housing switched over to uh, bedsit type housing in the 70s when the, the holiday market sort of dropped, went, went abroad. <laughs> um, but that's being addressed, you know, as a sort of long term um, change will be happening, you know, away from that kind of housing, which will help. But there's, despite that transient population that we have, people who come here just for a year or two and then go to live somewhere else. But, uh, aside from that, we do have a lot of people who live here long term and they're uh, community minded, they're artistic. So, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, one of the reasons I love Boscombe. Well, the neighbourhood plan was brought in under localism for uh, neighbour communities to sort of more say in planning. So really what it involved was um, creating new planning laws and uh, doing that by lots and lots of consultation with local people, but the community themselves doing it. So we set it up ourselves. It was the first one in Bournemouth. Um, People said it couldn't be done <laughs> in Boscombe, and you know, the, you know, and I, maybe if I'd have known it would be so much work, I might not have actually done it. It took it took five years, you know, voluntary work for me as the person who initially started it. But even the team who was with me they were there four years, so um, the uh, it's it's of great benefit because um, you need it. You need a strong community when i say boscombe has a strong community it really does because you know we had a lot of well-attended meetings before that i was running the forum we would have some very busy meetings we'd have sometimes over 100 people coming to a meeting you know just a public meeting which is um good for any area in bournemouth I agree. <laughs> uh, we were probably one of the most well-attended forums um so with with a neighbor plan it really you know because boscombe had a lot of problems as well and it really enabled us to sort of look at what, what was wrong with the area? So, for example, too many bed sits. So we have a policy which was fairly controversial, that not to have any more HMO housing in Boscombe. We were, it's very well, um, it's very well documented, but we got far too many here. Um, so we made the case, and it was approved by the, um, you know, the people who check these things. Uh, that, that 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 was fair to say that we sh we shouldn't have any more here. Uh, we've got a policy where all new buildings would have to have uh, fifty percent would have to be three bedroom flats or larger. We've also got a minimum size now. You can't build any rabbit hutch housing anymore in Boscombe. You've got to adhere to the government minimum size, which uh, was hasn't been adopted in Bournemouth. So you do see that rabbit hutch housing quite a lot, and we were getting a lot of it here before the neighbourhood plan. So one of the real benefits of it is now we, we've got this towns fund going in. We're going to see a lot of uh, potentially a lot of investment in Boscombe, £26 million coming from government and a lot of match funding and a lot of building over the next 10 years potentially. Um, but out of that, there, a lot of those plans that have been drawn up for that are influenced by the work we did as a, as a community on the neighbourhood plan. So that will be... That is, in, in in many ways very influenced by the community this, this is obviously a bigger bigger plan but um for example there's 500 housing units coming in that's going to be uh, according to the neighborhood plan laws we, we put together you know so we get we had a, we put it to referendum in last year in 2019 and i think it went in november and we got 94 percent yes nearly you know so uh that was a big endorsement from the community. It wasn't a huge turnout, but it was it was respectable, I thought, you know, for, for Boscombe, particularly as it wasn't hinged on any kind of national election. It was just a, a referendum about, you know, fairly boring planning doc document, you know, but people came out and voted, so uh, I was very pleased. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it gets really slandered, you know, if you look at the newspapers and the comment section of the, the professional trolls who... <laughs> come out with the same old stuff or oh, just all we should do is just knock down Bosco and uh, everywhere you go there's drug, ad drug addicts everywhere um, I mean I've been here for 20 years and I've never had any kind of problems walking around I've never been mugged or anything like that um, 
and I've lived in London before I came here, living in Brixton and Croydon, you know, and Boscombe's nothing like areas like that where you really are, you know, there are areas you can't go. Um, and the same people you would see in Boscombe, you do see in Southbourne, you do see in Bournemouth, you can go down the high street in Bournemouth and, and see lots more street people and people begging, you know, so really that side of Boscombe is very unfair, fairly exaggerated you know in, in certain people and trolls and things like to, to exaggerate there, there is problems in Boscombe there is a, like I said earlier with with transient populations with bad housing particularly bedsit housing a lot of it's not very good housing and um, and there's you know people you know just that type of housing attracts you know so uh, you know that is something that is being addressed but i don't think that's really something to judge a whole area by you know the the areas the people who do stay here love the area you know so you don't love an area because it's full of crime and poverty you know because that, that's just a small part of boscombe boscombe's full of a, a lot of interesting stuff and good people there's a good art scene going on here and a lot of you know it's the most diverse place in dorset you know so we've got 26 different cultural groups living in boscombe it's a dense population so there's a population density similar to hackney in london you know it's two and a half times bournemouth density of population so uh, it's very different to a lot of areas in bournemouth and paul and christchurch you know it's got its own character i find it coming from london you know it's refreshing it's it's not dull ever really <laughs> and i look forward to it really i've always seen it having a lot of potential when i came into this pub it was just a cellar and uh just a few local people used to regularly support it um but i always thought it had tons of potential and it has it's grown into that potential and i see that in boscombe it's got tons of potential you know i lived in brixton before it's brixton now it's not like when brixton when i lived there and Croydon is, is changed from when I lived there, you know, even Brighton, I lived in Brighton for years and uh, Brighton's, you know, flourished and, you know, achieved its potential and Boscombe's got tons of potential, which it will achieve, I'm sure. Well, I, I was quite surprised that, it, that we ended up in lockdown, I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> um, I just remember being told we had to shut, you know, sort of on a Friday night. <clears throat> I didn't say, didn't expect them to do that. Um, so that was a, a shock and it was very sad to see the place all closed down, you know, and um, just sort of left as it was. Everyone had to stay at home. It was, uh, you know, we didn't really know, uh, you know, how long it would last. So as it, the longer it went on, the worse it got. Because then I was like, you know, I thought we'd be open again in a month and would, you know, sort of just dragged on and on and on. And even now we're... we're Day to day, the rules are changing. Trading is very difficult, but um, you know we got a lot of support from people in our crowdfunder, which was really it was, I was really very depressed. And uh, when we first first did that, and there was a lot of great comments from people, and it sort of that, that really helped to keep keep sort of some vision going, some energy going, and um, and now we're open it's just a lot better than being closed because there's people back in here we've we've got you know the windows are getting opened every day you know you just don't want places like this don't want to be kept shut shuttered you know they don't do very well <laughs> you know we're trying to keep the guy even the garden watered you know and and things like that you know all our plants dying and stuff was was terrible so um yeah it's, it's it was uh it was very difficult and uh still is difficult i'm determined to see see us through to the end of it i'm hoping to get some uh some funding to do some arts bring some music and arts back in because i'm really missing it we're just operating as a mainly as a bar we got a little bit of food um but i'm planning on bringing my music back in and performances and original performances being asked all the time because we are one of the main places for people to play and 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 we you know obviously uh we've been doing it a long time we're very well known for it so uh i am itching to uh get back to sort of a seven day a week music schedule really the arts yeah arts and the, the music is um i think it's you know it's fundamental to society you know so it is it brings an awful lot there's a big difference between sitting in a pub with nothing's going on or they're watching the football um 
uh, to you know something where there's energy and events happening. You know, it's good here. We we you've got a bit of everything because you've got spaces where there isn't anything happening, and you can just talk. And then there's spaces where there is events happening, and 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 and, and so there's always an option to engage with art and we do all sorts of different you know with music theater poetry all sorts of different things and i think it's very very important it's very important for society it's very important for people's well-being it's very important for the artist's expression as well new ideas come out that way so i think for social cohesion it's it's brilliant i mean it's really it really worked in this this pub you know we when we opened up started off just doing a you know weekend music you know and um it was very well received and we had a when i opened chaplains we just had this blank space and we started to put events on in it because it was a you know people came and approached us asked whether they could use it and there was a real um it wasn't much in boscombe places to do that kind of thing anyway so uh there was um definitely um demand for it and uh and it grew in, 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 with its own energy, really, into a seven-day day a week program. You know, sometimes several events a day. You know, and uh, it's quite it's quite unique, even in the country, what we do, the diversity of what we do. Um, but yes, yeah, uh, I I get, you know, every day people tell me how much it means to them to have a place like this. You know, a place where they can go and feel comfortable and safe, and a place where they can socialise, and a place where they can watch live music where they can watch you know things that they want to see you know it's uh i think it means a lot to a lot of people well i think people need to support their uh their local businesses you know it's one of the most important things you know um you don't want all these spaces to go because you don't know what's going to come along and replace them or if they'll even be there anymore we were talking earlier, I think before we started filming about permitted development and how a lot of our shop units can just get turned into flats. You know, once that starts in an area, you, you know, it's usually the, the, the start, beginning of the end <laughs> and it won't come back. You know, like we said, it won't come back. You'll lose areas of your high streets, you know, you'll you lose your big pubs and they'll turn into supermarkets or even into flats like the Portman in Boscombe that's gone now. That's flats, not even shops, you know, so... Uh, um, you don't want to lose those spaces. You don't want to compromise. And those are local business people who are giving a lot into the into back into the, the areas. Um, so I think that's one of the main things people can do is to support their local businesses. You know, because their businesses will support them as well. You know, it was a two way thing. Um, so uh, yeah, and support each other. <laughs> As, as communities you know look out for your neighbors get to know your neighbors talk to people in the streets you know the more you know everybody around you years ago people knew everybody you know everybody knew knew their local local neighbors and stuff and then sort of which things started to change a bit but communities moved around so i think yes you know talk to people locally and support your local businesses <laughs> Well, the town's funded, it's potentially huge. It's a generational opportunity for Boscombe, you know, once in a generation. So um, we did do a, a bid for a similar fund last year, which Pool High Streets and Hamworthy got. But I think we had a strong bid and we were invited to take part um, in this. So the council obviously is running this. It's not a community just bigger than the community. <laughs> Um, but it's uh, you know there's communities on board. I'm in, on the town's fund board, and so is the chairman of the forum, Morag. And um, so the uh, it's it, it's it's a, basically it's 26 million pounds the government will give to to you know uh, the it's a very it's a central Boscombe, it's the high street and um, just adjacent areas to it. But it's uh, potentially it's going to be change the face of Boscombe. Uh, what what's been consulted on is to take the sovereign center away, the shopping center, the uh, not the arcade, not the old one, but the the new one, and um, replace it with um, a town square, which would be brilliant. To, to even the whole, at the moment, just this thin, long high street that doesn't work very well for events. So we've tried to do events in it, and uh, you'll see you see lots of even in America taking shopping malls out and putting town squares in because there's this, this European idea of town squares where you know you can put anything in a town square you can put a market in you can put 
um, concerts on, you can put uh, all sorts of things, car boot sales, you know, things that bring people together and, and, and it obviously lends itself and shops facing the square and people moving around, it just works very well. So we that would be in the heart of Boscombe. Um, there would be some changes to the road layouts that would uh, aren't really very pretty or useful the way we have the roads around here. So, um, and also bringing a lot of new people into the town centre, which, um, which, uh, and and with the, with fifty percent of that being a three bedroom or larger, that's going to be potentially a lot more families and stuff coming into Boscombe, and some infrastructure around that for the arts. There's a lot of big focus on the arts and for tech as well because five G is coming into Boscombe and it's going to be. Um, a license by the council rather than the phone company so this is going to be particularly for tech companies to come and experiment with and to um, you know kind of build apps and things like that so uh, really there's that's a chance for training and employment for Boscombe you know on quite a big scale uh, the arts are going to be um, funded and the spaces are going to be provided for arts as well since we lost our community centre in Boscombe there's not been much available space, so really it's a massive opportunity for Boscombe, and um, you know uh, I really hope it comes off. You know it's going to take up to about. I don't think we'll see any shovels in the ground for at least five years, but it's a it's a um, it's a massive potential. Well, I think Boscombe's got a, a really good potential for being a, an accessible place. You know, disabled friendly blind friendly you know all, all those kind of things you know because we're a very flat place um, I mean I'm just at the moment building my restaurant next door and we're putting disabled facilities in there so I'm going to become more accessible which is good it's brilliant you know that I can be that and as a music venue I'm going to put internal streaming in and people you know who can't get down to the cellar to watch the stage might be able to watch it on their phones inside inside the building or on a screen and put some earphones in with a hearing loop and things <coughs> So, but Boscombe itself, you know, I think is is, is as a as massive opportunity for, particularly if they're going to be doing this big structural change, maybe look at how the pavements are and how the crossings are, put some, uh, well, I think they've already talked, I've always been saying for a long time, we need a bus service down to the pier, you know, with a disabled, you know, accessible bus. And I think they are already rolling mats out. There's a mat matting that you can put across the sand so that wheelchairs can get get down to the sea so i think boscombe could market itself as you know an accessible shopping community dining you know sort of place by the sea you know for for people to, to be inclusive of everybody you know boscombe is already very diverse you know let's you know be even more inclusive let's make it more inclusive for everybody and i think this is a really good opportunity to do that and i hope when they do the finer detail of this kind of towns fund once you know if the, the money gets approved and they're looking at the detail that that is going to be one of their priorities i think that would really help um the area you know um yeah i think people people need to get involved you know sort of it's you could sit at home and <laughs> a lot of people sit at home and moan <laughs> you know oh god they could have done that and they could have done that and i was probably a bit like that a few years ago you know and i made a decision maybe 10 years ago because I look at all these problems in the world and get quite sort of a bit helpless about it all and feel helpless. And I, was, um, and I made a decision. I said, well, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change myself and I'll change what's, you know, I can immediately around me what I can do, you know, what I can influence and what I can change. And I got involved in local local stuff. I got involved in the forum and lots and lots of changes occurred, you know, not necessarily because of me, but, you know, I've been part of that. And, um, and I've... I've helped influence it you know and that's what you can do you can help influence your area directly and um that's energizing you know it's empowering it's definitely worth doing you know if you live in an area why not get involved with it you know why not get to know the people who live that you know in some ways i'm obviously in a busy social business anyway but so i meet a lot of people but a lot of the people who work with me on the neighbor plan and other things i've been doing that you know they don't have that sort of business and they're involved and they, you know and they and they're doing stuff you know it's that uh, you, you know we always need we de we definitely need more people in Boscombe to get involved you know we've got you know, lots of things that need doing and uh, you know and um it needs local people to do it because if you don't do it the council's going to do it and the council aren't local you know they're going to do it their own way and then you're going to be moaning that they didn't do it they didn't talk to people and they didn't do it right <laughs> so get involved do it yourself you know and um 
work with your neighbours and work with your friends and just get involved. It's, it's brilliant and it, that really helps an area. It shapes an area massively. It makes it ten times better than waiting for other people to do it and for councils or governments to come and do stuff. You know, the more you can do it yourself, even when they do come with like this towns fund with a lot of money, then you're established, you're there, and you can help influence what they want to do with the money, you know, which is brilliant because they have to come and talk to you.